welcome back to the series of questions and answers on prognosis this is the last episode in the series which is on uh, oneness oneness means the experience and the experiencer are not two separate realities they are one although the experience part is false changing and the experiencer part is true or unchanging it is the essence however these two parts or these two aspects are of one that one is the whole existence just like uh, clay and uh, pots just like gold and ornaments just like uh, waves and water the very first question is why is there no third why are there only two categories in existence experience and the experiencer why is there nothing else and the reason is very simple that uh, it is necessary when we say something is necessary that means there is no other possibility whatever you do that which is necessary is the result so you can imagine something which is not an experience and also not the experiencer now how to bring the evidence of such a thing simply imagining does nothing if you want an evidence you must experience it directly and so it will become an experience it will fall in the category of experience and you can say no it is not any experience but it is there so it will fall in the category of experiencer because there is only one such thing which is there but it is not an experience so ultimately whatever you take in this existence it will fall in these two categories you can say no there is something which is not an experience and and not an experiencer and now no evidence can be produced it will remain imagination a fantasy forever but uh, the amazing thing is there are also not these two categories they are not present the division is uh, artificial there are no two and uh, eventually the experience is also empty experiencer is already empty these are not objects that can be counted one or two or three or thousand it is zero the zero is all all is zero probably have said this thing in every episode now this is how it is so there is a belief that uh, probably we are making a mistake there has to be something there which is not an experience and also not an experiencer so everybody is most welcome to discover that but uh, it is an impossibility existence is always found in two forms and that is also a convenient division there is really no form there is no separate experiencer what is it then unknowable number 2 why has unlimited oneness taken limited forms the very definition of a form is it will have some kind of boundaries and there cannot be a form which is unlimited and so the unlimited cannot take an unlimited form it's very easy the form if it is taken will always be limited it can be big or small it can be beyond our understanding or within understanding that is not the real matter another thing is since all forms are uh, false illusions so in reality no form is taken the unlimited never becomes limited or never takes any form these forms are appearances and fleeting appearances it cannot be permanent the existence cannot hold on to one form and there is ultimately nothing which is formed it always remains a possibility apparently there is something for a time being it's all a momentary dream nothing was really done by the unlimited oneness it always remains unlimited and in this infinity there is this potential to manifest as limited forms but one or two forms can be limited however you cannot limit the infinity so there are infinite forms as there is infinite possibility the potential is unlimited so the unlimited appears as unlimited forms so the infinite appears as infinite forms and the total count is always infinite not limited so the belief here is that the oneness which is the ultimate infinite existence has somehow changed into smaller forms so nothing to worry that did not happen 
that infinite is you and you are infinite eternally so if you give up this kind of notion then the question of why it happened disappears number 3 is it not arrogance to call oneself ultimate the existence has been called by many names ultimate greatest everything all very very grand names brahman so when i say i am ultimate is it arrogance is it pride because i am a small human insignificant creature in this infinity so how can i call myself the ultimate it is very easy there is no body who is calling himself as a ultimate the ultimate is using a limited form to pronounce that it is ultimate the infinity the all is appearing as a small creature and saying that i am infinity because this creature itself is a non entity it is illusion it cannot say anything or if it says anything that is meaningless so becoming the one becoming the ultimate simply means giving up this identification with the individual identification with the limited dropping the ego when you drop the ego that which remains is ultimate so actually when you call yourself as whole and complete and infinite and ultimate you are giving up the ego it is exactly opposite of arrogance it is becoming humble that i am not this limited entity whatever there is is whole whatever there is is infinity the wave is finally saying i am not a wave i am the ocean is the wave arrogant for dissolving itself in the ocean this is the reality there is no separate wave ocean is the only reality the waves arise as a small form limited uh, for a time being it goes back in the ocean so it is the ocean saying i am here in the form of a wave so why is this confusion then because the one who is asking has no self knowledge no knowledge of oneness he heard somebody saying i am the ultimate and he sees that person as a human being as a body mind how can this body mind call itself ultimate but that body mind is not calling itself ultimate the body mind is referring to its essence which is ultimate giving up the identification with the body mind is the only way to become ultimate this body mind cannot become ultimate separately surrender is the only way so the ignorant person considers himself as body mind and sees others as body mind and so cannot understand how can anybody be ultimate what is ego or arrogance that i am a human i am separate from the whole i have a independent existence i am an entity which has a reality this is arrogance this is ego so calling yourself as a human being is arrogant and also ignorant if that person does not inquire about uh, the great formulas of non duality before blaming somebody to be arrogant then it is also stupidity so belief here comes out of a ignorance of what they are and they think that a wise person is actually a person who considers himself ultimate or superior to others and this has happened because the one who is asking the question has not found their essence they do not know who they are it is like one wave in the ocean saying i am a wave there are other waves and this one wave is crazy it says i am the ocean there is no such thing as, as ocean there are only waves i have never seen a ocean so obviously this one wave will be called arrogant in the eyes of ignorant waves i have seen this happens a lot and therefore the teaching is not revealed to those who are not ready they mostly misunderstand or they understand it or they take it in a completely opposite way this is the problem with ignorance that the one who is ignorant does not know that he is ignorant most of the time they think that i am the greatest i know everything this is the sign of ignorance and they are very quick to blame those who tell the truth and that is why there are systems there is systematic way to deliver the teachings and so on to avoid these kinds of disasters the one who has become ultimate will never say it 
he will simply say i am no more i am gone completely nirvan number 4 despite being the whole why can't i do what i want so this question is probably coming after hearing that you are all powerful you are the whole existence whatever is being done in the existence whatever is happening in the existence is being done by the existence and you are that existence so the person is wondering no i cannot do anything much i am completely useless how can i be the whole look i am not able to do anything special no miracles no abilities not i am not powerful also so you can see that the teaching was completely missed and the person is still a person there is still a person there and the person is the truth so obviously now nothing can be done the teaching has completely failed here but uh, this creature does nothing already the complaint is that i can't cannot do anything i want the creature is not the doer there is absolutely no doer and nothing is actually happening so there is no question of creature doing anything this creature has no desire of its own no will of its own and it does not act by its own will the word want means desire or will so who is doing it then and obviously it is happening but poetically you can say the whole or the existence is doing it it is poetic because it is ignorance to attach any kind of agency to the existence it is emptiness emptiness does emptiness nothing else but sometimes we say whatever happens happens because of the will of the whole all and that is also an appearance that it happens and it seems to happen through the means of medium of this creature any creature so the human beings are simply puppets they do not have they do not do anything it happens the illusion is of me doing something or wanting something is an after effect of action or desire appearing that effect is called ego that which takes the responsibility of whatever is happening through the medium of this creature the ego has some use like in survival but is not true so what is really happening is there something which is not happening and that is again ignorance everything that is possible is happening what is possible in finite amount of actions in finite amount of desires they are all appearing here in me so if existence the doer then yes i am doing everything however this kind of sentence will cause tremendous amount of confusion not only in ignorant people also those who have knowledge because the knowledge is never framed like this it is too confusing but we cannot stop people from writing poetry and songs which has been done since many thousand years many of the scriptures are full of such poetry sometimes it is reversed not me you are doing everything the great one is doing everything that is also very confusing so the belief here is that if i become the whole i'll get some special abilities to do anything i want or i'll get some super powers there will be some advantage in being the whole so there is a disappointing news that being the whole simply means end of the individual the individual does not become the whole the individual disappears the person disappears the creature is seen as illusion and that is being the whole and then whatever is happening is happening in the whole right here right now the situation is exactly this when you become the whole you don't become uh, something special or great you are reduced to nothing number 5 how did one break into two so usually we do not start with one that is uh, very difficult to grasp we start with two there is experience there is experiencer then we say they are one after knowing the characteristics and so called qualities of the two we find out that it is one so this question is probably recalling that thing that you told me there are two now you told me it is one so how did the one broke down into two but it is a very legitimate question the fact is that we separated the one into two for the purpose of study this is done by the mind even if we don't do it for the purpose of the study the mind does it anyway the tendency of the mind is to divide so it divides 
because the mind cannot grasp anything with, without dividing it it goes on dividing even after the two appears so we take advantage of this tendency that it can divide things into two or many and we study them separately this is called the analysis after the study we find that uh, very it is all very strange and then we find that they are one or oh, that will be synthesis in this process nothing was broken nothing to worry the duality is appearing in non duality it does not become dual it appears like this that the experience is separate and independent from the experiencer and the experiencer is separate and independent from the experience sometimes many people will say one depends on the other the other depends on the first but the relation is of oneness not of dependency or cause or effect so the one never becomes two otherwise there was no way to convert it into one again the union is all already there you need to realize that the division is false it is very simple number 6 how to remain in the state of oneness and uh, every student should uh, realize this that oneness is not a state of the mind or body or the person or anything or the experiencer that which is is oneness there cannot be anything else it is always oneness all the time everywhere there can be other states twoness threeness this that it is possible and they are all illusions in the oneness usually these states are states of the mind and they are fleeting they come and go but oneness is not a state sometimes we say that you are always in the state of oneness or the existence is in the state of union or oneness all the time and this is also poetic because it's not a state it is like this all the time we are trying to say something like this so you cannot remain in the state of oneness because that is what remains all the time you are not in the state of twoness or any other kind it is not a special state which you can reach by doing something by being something yes you can realize that the other states are false the separation is uh, illusion or ignorance give up that belief and you will find that it is always oneness it is always oneness even if you don't know even if there is ignorance or even if you forget nothing needs to be done number 7 existence brahman emptiness advait perfection potential what is the difference between all these things so the whole story is over but probably nothing was understood because they are the names of the same they are the names of the one that which is now why are there so many names this is the real question it is because there are many traditions there are many philosophies and they have named the whole or the existence in their own language they have created their own terminologies their own names moreover in the same tradition two different masters will use different names sometimes so sometimes the same master in the same tradition will use many names for the same thing this is not only with existence this is the case for any important concept or idea or word there are many names of the same thing why has this happened why do they do this and the reason is very simple that uh, this the study of the whole or who am i is so old thousands of years old we don't even know how old it is and many times the same thing got discovered again and again by different people and they called it by different names and when the civilizations grow and merge and information exchange happens usually initially there is confusion that they are talking about the different things but uh, some study tells you that uh, everybody is talking about the same thing however we adopt in the words that are beautiful sometimes to avoid monotonous kind of lectures we use different words and obviously when the paths are different totally different words are used i think in india itself there are probably 100 words for the final reality i did not count everything in the world or in this whole universe so ultimately the names do not matter the knowledge matters what are these names pointing to that should be understood if you do not understand the 
thing these names are pointing to then you will assume that these all names mean something different and that is worse than not knowing anything so we are talking about one language or one civilization or two or three civilizations here you will find one or two words for the ultimate in all the languages there are thousands of languages how are you planning to learn this thing by learning all the languages and dictionaries or by simply seeing what is the ultimate and then throwing away all the names which is more intelligent approach some people keep fighting about the names and that is very funny and boring number 8 what should be done after attaining knowledge of non duality and this is a similar question which we took during the discussion on the self realization that what should i do after knowing i am not the individual i am not the doer what can i do now <laughs> so the knowledge of non duality clearly says that there is no action there is no actor these are all illusions so how come there is a question of doing something it looks like the mind fell back into ignorance immediately or there was no contemplation no introspection happened and this automated response came out okay i know non duality now i know everything i am everything tell me the next step what should i do now what is next for me so you can see this is the nature of the mind it cannot sit still immediately wants to do something and it wants to do something even after knowing that there is nothing to do there is nobody to do anything so will nothing happen will i sit at one place and die finally and there is nobody to sit at one place nobody dies nothing like this happens so there is no question of doing anything and there is no question of not doing anything this is probably the true action and this is probably the true non action that things appear to happen and whatever is necessary will happen however an average seeker is not satisfied with this reply so because the guru is very compassionate something is given you have the knowledge now do this obviously some time passes and the seeker realizes that it was all stupidity i don't need to do anything at least i don't need to do anything specific or special there is no i these thoughts are generating from ignorance sometimes we say do whatever you like you are free you are liberated now even though you don't have any will but apparently there is willing happening here so follow it follow your bliss do that which you enjoy most i have seen that people like this at least this ego or the creature likes this thing that it is set free it is unleashed however after some days the student comes back into the peaceful state where he or she realizes that uh, liberation means nothing special <laughs> I, do, i won't do anything more than what i am doing i means the creature and it totally depends on the guru what advice is given sometimes it is said that live a simple life beautiful life fulfill your desires be truthful live an ordinary life and mostly that is what will happen no miracles happen this kind of life where there is no madness of ignorance is actually miracle spirituality is the end of stupidity that is miracle that is the biggest miracle in the universe ultimately there are practical aspects of the life of a seeker and they are free to decide what to do there are no rules in the path of knowledge at least depends on the path also sometimes a specific lifestyle is taken on knowingly like that of a renunciate and it has some advantages disadvantages which i am not going to discuss because we are talking about the q and a which i have discussed somewhere else and usually the seekers decide something simple and a life is mostly devoted to the service helping others to find the path to show them the light number 9 is unity the final truth unity means oneness here also called the yog union it is mostly said yes this is the final statement this is the final truth but what is known here nothing really what happens is whatever was accumulated and was stamped as knowledge was thrown which is all ignorance only all beliefs superstitions assumptions so whatever remains can be called pure 
essence or truth one meaning of the word truth is that will which will never go away that which is the final essence of everything so yes oneness remains as the final statement you can say yes that is true and there is oneness however if something is true there must be something which is false and in this case the ignorance that there are two or more is false you can say like this at the level of non duality however what is false in our experience what is true that is not defined now because if something is false something is true that is the level of duality in duality there is something which can be called true which is you your essence and there is something which is called false a illusion which is whatever is being experienced in non duality these two are not there so there is no true or false these concepts are gone now they are also thrown away like everything else so nothing is true here nothing is false but everything is true and everything is false now i leave it to you to decode all these things it simply means that do not use dual words to describe the non dual say silent sometimes we write down the formulas that this is the final truth this is the final this is the ultimate so on so you can see that when we discard the silence we are left with all these words which is simply some kind of approximation of silence but we need to communicate we need to do something in practice to show what we know or to start at least the discussion or to begin the path of knowledge so we drop down from the silence which is the highest teaching to words yes you want to know the truth this is the truth now let me tell you why it is true let me show you the evidence now all other words are brought in means of knowledge criteria for truth experience experiencer logic rationality direct experience so the whole journey now starts probably it is necessary but fortunately on the path of knowledge the journey is reverse we come back to the silence we come back from anywhere we are to the home you can call it unity you can call it oneness you can call it the final truth ultimate remember these are all words they are simply the steps to reach your home and the home is also a word so these are instruments that bring you back to your true nature finally all the words are dropped and you are that which you are so do not assume that uh, i know everything because i heard these formulas great sayings from somebody they were written somewhere in sanskrit or some other language and assuming that will be ignorance knowledge is never attained by listening to few sentences only somebody who has traveled this path can take you to the final the final place is your home it is not something extraordinary or some great truth some exotic state nothing like this so if you simply listen to one or two sentences here and there all you will get is more ignorance you will not reach your home so walk backwards inwards and you will see that you are already in your home so here we conclude the questions and answers on oneness hopefully your question was also answered or at least you got an idea probably now you can get your own answer find out what is the belief find out what is the assumption you are holding on to and drop it so hopefully it was useful thank you everybody for listening